we've been down this road before, but there's some advice that bears repeating. So this is the tire I took apart earlier in the summer. And at the time, all life was good. I had a, a roofing screw in the tread and I patched it up. She sealed, she held air, life, life was fine. But uh, about three weeks later, I, I start getting pressure loss and it wasn't it wasn't that big a deal and I just ran the rest of the season adding air to it on occasion but I hate it I just want one of these tires to hold freaking air properly all winter long right and and this means I'm gonna have to drag the hoses out and refill this thing a half dozen times throughout the winter and that's irritating so to find the leak it's just warm soapy water and Dawn dish soap and I pour it in there and I, I think it's fairly obvious where it's leaking from so that means it's leaking between the two rim halves which is really what I expected and when I changed this thing in the field I, I didn't have a whole lot of you know I was working against a deadline fast and I actually even reused the old o-ring which is usually it doesn't work it held for a while but it doesn't work if you suspect you got leaking rings, what you need to do first is run the tires up to about 90 PSI. Whatever the, assuming you trust your tires, your own risk, but whatever the rims say, not necessarily the tires, because I found that the tires will sometimes have a higher PSA rating than, than the rims, but run them up to whatever the rims say and let it sit there for a bit. And that actually might seat those O-rings tightly against the rim and solve all of your problems. If it doesn't work, and it didn't work here, because I, I took all the tires up, I think to 85 to drive it home, and it didn't work here, now you gotta you gotta break them down. Oh well, yeah, I don't know. You've seen it so many times. I, I don't know what I can add to to breaking down the tires. If it's the first time the tires been apart in many many years, it's gonna be rough. This one was apart, like five weeks ago so it's not gonna be so bad get the tap and I have a video on this get the tap that's the right size if you haven't if you got paint if you got rust run the thread chaser down on these it is so much easier that's really all I've got make sure she's totally dead flat valve core out before you pull these loose because boom one thing I did notice at pulling this tire look at that all right you can almost see that these two tread blocks have mended together. And these have, have blended together. So it's lost, it's lost that band. But this is fun. See it coming back. So it's in one spot, it's right there. That is balance. That is balancing. And I had kind of abandoned the idea of fluid balancing the things. Just I didn't think it worked well enough to deal with the mess, but it might be time to go back and relook at, at balancing these. And I think I'm going to experiment with uh, either the beads, um, bulk airsoft beads. I'm a little concerned I can even get enough of them in there to make a dang bit of difference. Or, you know, um, I don't want to try all the old timer stuff. I don't want to try lead shot. It's just going to be lead dust in my wheels. I'm dumb enough as it is. But maybe those bags of powder, the actual truck stuff, they tell me it sometimes will clump up in tires this big. I don't know. I've never used it. But it might be time to go back and check those out. Lord knows there's not a whole lot of life left in these Michelins. and They're kind of the crappiest of all the tires. But it might be time to revisit that. Do they make a tire bead, a specific sort of airsoft BB bead? I have BB gun BBs. Or, uh, you know, this has got the the uh, bead locker in this tire. So, whatever's in there is really not going to pelt or sandblast the the rim itself. Because that, uh, that bead lock bead is going to prevent it. And they're dang tough. I think I have one on the shelf. Hold on. Yeah, I did. So here is uh, a beadlock bead. I mean, it's 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 darn tough. It's not going to hammer 
the rim whatever you put in there of course something you know if if you're if you're going to use a fluid balancer and the antifreeze it corrodes anyways for whatever reason goes acidic with age or something like that um, this is going to trap that moisture right against the rim that could be that could be hellish but and i don't know if they use these in on the CTIS trucks or not. If they use these on the CTIS trucks, then it, it does seem to me like you could probably get away with an airsoft BB because this is your only this is your only uh, connection to the inside of the rim is that one right there, and um, you know that could be plugged, wooden dowel drilled out. It uh, just has to pass a little air. So, you know, anyways, just thoughts. And before somebody comments, oh, if you plug that, the air won't blah blah. Yes, it will. It'll be fine. If you had an eighth inch hole, it would be fine. They have the big hole, so you don't have to be very accurate. And even then, you don't have to be very accurate. It's going to be fine. It's going to be just fine. But anyway, so... Uh, Got some armor plating in there, and it might give me something to work with. But that is balancing right there. I, I know it's because of how many miles we put on this. I mean, we just put a crap ton of miles. I'm sure there are some who put more, but not many. So it might be uh, more of an issue for me than for you. And, and I know I see the kind of tire wear that um, many of these trucks and in private hands won't see in in five years and I see it in in four months but I don't know. I'll let you know if it works and if it's a dismal failure I'll let you know that too holy crap seven minutes uh, I'm plattering on